before Heffron. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I make a contribution to this bill for two reasons. One, that I am the local member that is impacted by uh, this bill, and two, because the principles espoused by the member for Sydney's second reading speech uh, are principles of which I disagree with. However, the method to achieve them, and that is by this bill, in my view, does not achieve them. I do, however, thank the, the member for Sydney for consulting me in respect of this bill, both before he submitted it and the fact that it was on the agenda today. I appreciate his courtesy. It is far in excess of the courtesy shown to me last uh, December when the Minister for when, when the Attorney General tried to slip in an amendment to the Cricket Ground Act in the, uh, uh, in the Miscellaneous Provisions Act without consultation with me and others who, who run around getting briefings in, from the Sydney Cricket Ground Trust who, who get all this information and don't consult me in respect of being the local member. And again, that's been repeated again in debate that has taken place in respect of this bill. Now, the reality of the situation is simply this, that the Sydney Cricket Ground, the Entertainment Quarter, Moore Park and the Sydney Cricket Ground and the, and the Centennial Park Trust are a significant, important part of Sydney that require to be properly planned and properly integrated in respect of a planning system for this state and for the region and for the district. It was only yesterday that I met with the district commissioner and talked to her about how do we integrate infrastructure and planning within the Sydney area effectively. And, and what the member for Sydney is trying to do, and his bill doesn't achieve it, is, is simply trying to get the provisions of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act, the provisions of the Greater Sydney Commission Act that the government, that the government enacted, and, 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 the, the, and the Greater Sydney Commission to be able to get a coordinated planning concept in respect of all matters including matters of significant government infrastructure, including matters that are important to the state of New South Wales. Now, I am pleased to hear the Minister tell this House, and, he, and he's right to do so, that a review of, uh, is being un undertaken of the legislation by the end of the year so that an, an appropriate system or standard can be applied to stadia within Sydney. I take no issue with that. I take no issue with the fact that they are important to Sydney. But what is, what is of chief importance is that these stadia, irrespective of where they are, and certainly when it applies to my electorate, are properly planned and they are a planning minister function. You but cannot have some junior sports minister careering around the state, uh, ignoring the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act and ignoring actually the wishes of the government in, 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 its, in, in its planning phase. Now, the Labor Party doesn't come to the Sydney Cricket Ground Trust and dealing with it with clean hands in any way whatsoever. Just like the Sports Minister now doesn't come into this House with clean hands after the way in which the Attorney-General tried to affect the latest lot of amendments in December of last year on the, on the quiet. But just to ensure that I'm being even-handed in my approach to, to that no major political party comes with clean hands, I, I just want to quote I just want to quote from the former member for, 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 for Bly, who represented that particular area, an area I'm sure the Sports Minister knows quite well, as does the, does the member for Coogee, not somebody who, who, had, who doesn't have a great deal of talent. And you might remember uh, the former member for Bly, Mr Michael Gapsley, and he spoke about the sort of amendments that were introduced historically that the Minister for Sport referred to. He said this, this bill represents the culmination of a grand and shameful conspiracy against the residents of the eastern suburbs to thrust upon them and their residential environment a sporting stadium of massive magnitude. It is the ultimate example of, the, of government by wink and nod. Who would have contemplated the need for government to pursue this matter in this way that totally dispenses with a perfect, reasonable and respected procedures allowed for in the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act and Local Government Act. Now, the, 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 the reason that, that the member for Sydney's bill does not achieve the general objective 
that even the Minister was talking about uh, briefly and, and, and that what uh, the former member for Bly was talking about is, is simply this. You cannot just change a couple of provisions uh, as provided for in the Sydney Cricket and Sports Ground Amendment Development Assessment Bill in the way in which he proposes and tinker around the edges. Firstly, the Minister's right, a review is required. Secondly, secondly, it requires the Minister for Planning, a, a Minister who I've got the utmost respect for, to do, a, a, and, uh, to, to, to do an examination of this legislation to see how it impacts upon the Environmental Planning Assessment Act, when how it impacts upon the Greater Sydney Which Commission Act, how, how it impacts up, upon district plans and state plans, and, and ensures that the development that occurs within, w w within Stadia, including the Sydney Cricket Ground, are properly done in a coordinated way that relate to the ability to transport people, relate to the ability to, to be able to operate in, 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 uh, together with and in conjunction with the entertainment quarter and Centennial Park and Moore Park. And that is a, that is a planning process. But you can't, have, um, you can't have one particular minister careering around ignoring an overall, overall planning objective, just like you can't have the member for Sydney trying to introduce some bill and tinker around, around the edges that, again, will have, uh, could have serious consequences and not achieve the objective that, that, uh, that, he, is seeking to, that, that, that he is seeking to achieve. <coughs> now, I know the Sydney Cricket Ground used to be in the member for Sydney's area, and, and I know he and the Lord Mayor of Sydney have been campaigning and fighting against the Sydney Cricket Ground for, for, about, for, for, for some decades. However, there have been significant changes in government approach to that area. There is currently now a master planning process being undertaken by, Sydney, by, 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 the, by, uh, by Centennial, and Moore, uh, Centennial Park lands and impact on Moore Park and Centennial Park. And, and, um, that is being done in a proper, transparent way, of which I'm grateful both to the to, to the uh, to the Environment Minister and, and Premier for ensuring that the views of Centennial Parklands have prevailed. I, I, I am delighted, through the intervention of, of, of the Environment Minister and Premier, to ensure that the City Cricket Ground Trust have got to go back to their box and develop within their, their own area. And I, I, I'm delighted that the City Cricket Ground Trust are now being treated by this government of the day as a, as a responsible organisation and can't get, uh, can't get any favouritism in terms of their, their, their ultimate plans to expand beyond, the, beyond their particular boundary. So, so, so the matter is proceeding in a coordinated way. I look forward to see what the results are at the end of the year of the, of, of the, ministers, of the ministers' work. My interest in this matter relates to, to my constituency, the impact on my constituency. I have no issue with an overall state examination of how it applies at Stadia. Of course, getting rid of privatisation is not something that the Labor Party would ever oppose, you would think, in that area anyway. I think there are, are great opportunities to improve the area, but it's got to be done through an overall planning concept, not done simply through, through one part of the executive government overriding yes. the overall government requirement How to plan in a particular precinct. And it's for that reason, uh, for that reason I don't support the Member for Sydney's bill. The other thing I say to the Member for, Sy for, 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 for Sydney Sorry. in respect to his bill, his second reading speech is this, yeah, that ordinarily when, when one moves a second reading oh, speech, one sets so out in the second reading speech what, what uh, yeah, each provision right. does and how each provision no, no, impacts upon each individual act. You cannot do it from, from that second reading speech. Obviously, a, a, a crossbencher doesn't have the resources. I don't have the resources. Only the Minister for Planning should have the resources. And I would urge that the Minister for, for, for Planning ensure that as the District Commission and the Greater Sydney Commission embark upon their work that, that the, that, that, and the reviews are undertaken, that the Sydney Cricket Ground Trust would be compelled to be part of that overall planning review. Otherwise, otherwise the government's whole purpose is just having their time wasted. The